It is that time again. What do we say? Phones down, glasses up, get yourself something nice poured, get your chips on. We have so much to talk about. My brain is just exploding with all the things that you need to know. Can we start first of all, because last week we focused a lot on harassment, online harassment, your story. And then we saw one of our own cabinet ministers just getting piled on in the most egregious way online. I can't believe this. Seeing this, former finance minister uh, Selena Robinson posted this on her social media, said, got this in my inbox today, still astonished at the hate that exists for some people. For the record, God did not give me cancer because I value and support inclusion in our community. Love wins. This is what she's referencing. See what happens when people groom children for sex? Like, They're talking this? about the this? drag queen story time at the libraries, which as post-secondary minister, she has supported. And so back to the grooming thing. Why are I hope all the you... religious right and right so obsessed with grooming? I think they might be projecting, fe fearful of something that they're feeling yeah. on their insides. Uh, I hope you all, all, all you pro pedophile scum. There's a real yeah, commonality. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of pro pedophiles in the world, aren't there? Boo to you! Yeah. And you know what? Swift and meaningful consequences for those who harass. That's the goal. That's the mission. I'm still on it. We are still on it. It is only just beginning. I know. So we we're going to take pour? a deep breath. And just before we dive into the show, uh, our Cascadia Liquor Pour of the Week, our show sponsor, has provided us with... This is wild. White Claw. It used to be the seltzer everybody knows them for. Yeah. They've come out with the... Tasty flavor. Vodka line. Tasty flavor. We're tasting the black cherry, and it's really nice. No sugar. Jo Jody's <laughs> in love. This is what I need this week. <laughs> Honestly... Yeah. We have so much to get to, but thank you to Cascadia Liquor um, for uh, subsidizing our set. Mm -hmm. We got the salt and vinegar chips. People always ask. We've got a little crinkle cut dill pickle. It goes nicely with the flavored vodka because we need to pit in. We got a busy show, as you said, and coming up on Steel and Vance. Uh, where do we begin? We begin with the, the most local of our stories. Okay. How about that? So we're going to talk about BC Stratas. There are over a million of us in BC living in Stratas. And the changes that have happened recently have made things a little bit challenging. For Love example, that. we now have a severe shortage of Strata property managers. They're short about 50%. We need hundreds of them. And you think, well, who cares? Well, who cares is because if you have a building that's worth, you know, a billion dollars, then you have you need to have someone who knows what they're doing managing it, and those yeah. people don't really exist right now. And managing people is hard enough. Managing a strata for some, boy, I hear some horror stories. So we're going to have the head of the Condo Homeowners Association of BC joining us to tell us what we need to know if you live in a strata. You'd have to be living under a rock to not be paying attention to what's going on with the former, what twice impeached, disgraced, one-term president, uh, former president of the United States. We're talking about Donald Trump. We're going to take you to the Southern District of New York where Reggie Cicchini, Washington, D.C. correspondent Reggie Cicchini, a good friend of the show, is going to join us and try and sort of map out the complexities of what we are witnessing in the world of Trump and possible indictment. I'm the kind of person who's been watching this clown show for several years and I want to see consequences for bad behavior and illegal activity. Donald Trump is Teflon. He seems to always yeah. escape it and thinks he always will. A lot of people say nothing's going to happen. This whole Stormy Daniels porn star hush money thing, eh, it's a nothing burger. And I'm saying, oh, something's going to stick. Something's gonna Linda's stick. Linda's got her popcorn Jody. out. She's got her popcorn I got my out. I love it. Out. There you go. There you go. You said clown show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. It is a spectacle for sure. It is something to keep an eye on. We'll bring that national, international news to your kitchen table for sure. But we're also going to get back to the heart of the matter. We we mentioned drag queen story hour uh, right off the top of the show there. But more upheaval when it comes to pride meeting the National Hockey League, if not in the NHL, where are we going to move the meter on not just tolerance, but inclusion mm -hmm. when it comes to LGBTQ2 plus in pro sports? I mean, the time is long past due. And now we're talking about how some teams are like, well, we're just not going to do Pride Night because, you know. But we were making progress. <sighs> and the teams were doing special jerseys and the fans right? were celebrating Pride. And then all of a sudden, teams are starting to come out with reasons and players why they don't support it for religious reasons. Now the new one, we'll tell you about it coming up, right. has to do with protecting the Russian players. Anyway, there's a lot to unpack we'll get to it. Brian Burke's comments on it. Kendra Fisher, good friend of the show, is going to be uh, chiming in with her thoughts as well. But right now, it is time for Hot Headlines. 
And there's a lot to dig into around China, uh, which reminds me of Donald Trump. China. Oh, you just did it. China. Oh, damn. Right? Girl. So stupid. Anyway, okay, so we've been talking about Chinese election interference, which is no laughing matter. No, it's not. But a liberal MP who was implicated sort of in the beginning as maybe having his campaign getting floated by some Chinese money and interference. His name is Han Dong. And there was a news story that came out from Sam Cooper, the investigative journalist we had on the show a couple of weeks ago. Big blockbuster of a story that this MP had secretly met with a Chinese diplomat in 2021 and said, you know, don't release the, the two, two Michaels, Michaels who'd been in jail for over 800 days at that point because he said allegedly that it would benefit the conservatives for some reason if they did that to hold off. So, of course, everybody lost it. And then hours later, another story came out. Oh, now he is stepping down. He did a tearful um, address to the House of Commons well, last night, which kind of shocked gonna, a bunch of people. He's going to sit as an independent, right? Yeah. The piece of this puzzle that really shocks me in following this story, I love Sam Cooper and all that he has brought to the table. He is the definition of investigative journalist, hardworking, diligent. He worked here in Vancouver also in City Hall. Also being a racist Well, that's just and it. That's where I was going with it. Are, are you serious? You're going to attack, attack the investigative journalist for what he is bringing to light? He is not partisan. He's not choosing a side. He's not just reporting. He's on it's, the side of truth. He, I mean, what a concept, mm -hmm. Linda. What a, what have we lost in this time where the the messenger is being attacked rather than the context of what he has put on the tables and, hey, we should probably pay attention to this. And the story keeps uh, changing. So today in the House of Commons, they voted in a non-binding motion. It passed to have a national inquiry, but because it's not binding and the Liberals all, with the exception of Han Dong, who voted for the inquiry, the Liberals all went, nope, 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 nope. So it. it's likely not to happen. But we did have our premier came out after our mayor was implicated as well as potentially having received some support, which he denies. David Eby came out and said he wants to have a briefing with CSIS. Uh, and Good. also the CSIS whistleblower came out, wrote an op-ed in The Globe. And Why a lot of people were it. saying that is an outrage and that person's a traitor. And I said, no, that takes a lot of guts. That takes a ton of guts. Mm -hmm. I don't understand attacking the the sunlight being cast on the things that, that the public really needs. Because maybe you have something to lose. Yeah, I guess maybe. Those, I think they Katie Telford's protest. going to testify. Yeah. Uh, that is the Premier's Chief of Staff. They filibustered, tried to avoid this for weeks. Finally, they mm. went, well, okay, when it became apparent that the NDP were going to vote with the Conservatives in the bloc to potentially, on a confidence motion, bring, you know, the whole government down. The Trudeau government went, well, okay, we'll let her testify. I found anyway. it interesting, Sandy Garasino, who was on with us last week in the discussion surrounding former Crown Prosecutor, she was looking at this going, do you honestly think that China is... Uh, all of a sudden so exposed that this is somehow not all part of the play? Like, we should also be mindful that we might be playing play into the dance of the five, seven I veils, know. I think is the... I sadly don't trust um, the Trudeau government for pushing back so hard. I don't understand it. I'm suspicious. And I feel like we need to get to the bottom of it. I think you're right. We but do need to get to the bottom of it. There are other things to okay. talk about. Uh, uh, let's get to them quickly. We have a new energy project essentially moving forward in BC. Shocking because it's fossil fuel. It's LNG. It's about cleaner time than though oil. First Nations get to But this get is in on the, the Heisla who have been uh, given a green light to move forward. Good. The problem with this one in Kitimat, it's a floating terminal, LNG terminal, is that it needs um, natural gas from the coastal gas pipeline <laughs> to, pipeline to go forward. And that one is in the midst, as we know, of all kinds of controversy. There's so much to get to. Okay, we got a, the Fortis gas prices dropping. Finally, some good news. Okay, let's consumers. throw that down. Yes. And mm -hmm. let's quickly move to uh, the president of the United States finally going to visit our Canadian soil. Looking forward to this after Donald Trump ended the uh, tradition of visiting with his neighbors to the north. Mm. I'm glad to see this. So Joe Biden will be in town, is probably in town as we speak, but we already know one of the big things that are going to be announced tomorrow has to do with asylum seekers and Roxham Road in Quebec yeah. has been seeing about 40,000 illegal um, asylum seekers coming in. I don't know if you can call them illegal. They're asylum seekers. Ottawa and, uh, <laughs> and Washington have struck a deal that they now will going to close Roxham Road and they will both allow only 15,000 a year. 
so there's lots of implications. We'll lots. talk more about this next week. If, with so many people coming and going and actually more and more coming, I think this year is a million that we hit with people moving to our country mm -hmm. and a housing crisis still being so prevalent. And we're seeing, you know, homelessness escalate in a time where we're trying to find a way to help people living rough, living in poverty, living below the poverty line, well below it, living in a tent, maybe needing to keep warm in a tent. Are you talking about the I'm talking about explosion? the chaos of this. How we got here. Yeah, Watch this, video. this is uh, on East Hastings. The fire chief has been warning for a long time that it is not safe. They're blocking entrance and exits to buildings. That tent had eight propane tanks in it. One of them was a 100 pound propane tank that had the gas nozzle open. Yeah, that's terrifying. Well, it is for a whole bunch of people. Anyway, so many things to talk about. We, we didn't even get to them all, but that's the gist of it. That's the gist of our high <laughs> headlines. We got yeah. so much is left on the yeah. cutting room floor. Later in the show, we are going to both weigh in on yet another controversy in the NHL with the Pride Night and the jerseys and who will wear it, mm. who won't wear it, and why. We'll get into that. Also ahead, too many condos, not enough property managers in BC. We've got another looming crisis in BC's strata market, and we'll tell you what you need to know next.